The paper, I suppose, created a sensation. Um, in two days of it being published, we had uh, over four million internet hits. Um, and it was interesting because it was special for a few reasons. Number one, it was the fact that we could um, track resistance going from one country to another. It was also a new type of resistance. Secondly, is that that resistance um, was kind of pan-resistance, uh, almost pan-resistance, so really multi-drug resistance. Thirdly, is because the Indian government and officials got very upset, and for two reasons. Number one was the fact that um, we, it had implications for medical tourism, which is a very lucrative trade in India. And the other point to make is of the naming of the gene called NDM, which we named after New Delhi. So because of all those reasons, it got a lot of publicity. And thankfully, it's actually put antibiotic resistance uh, back on the map where hopefully it belongs. Antibiotic resistance can sometimes be a somewhat arcane subject to the general public, uh, and I didn't think it would get the, uh, the pick-up it did. Uh, but I think the, the reaction from the Indian government was actually what, what generated the coverage that uh, then spread around the world. You can't predict the reaction that a, that a particular paper will get, uh, and you have to manage that reaction as it develops. In our case, uh, we decided to stay out of getting involved in the reaction to the story, because I really felt that that was up to the, the scientists to respond. Uh, the journal, in this case, this particular case, is only a facilitator. We knew that the next study was what is it in the environment and the reason why we wanted to do that was because India has a big problem with sanitation uh, not just in rural areas but in the uh, cities as well and you know we knew that um, particularly in Delhi the sewage system uh, can only cater for about 65 70 percent of the population and so we you know this kind of contamination with the environment or fecal matter etc so we wanted to try and swab the environment as we could so basically we found it in the Indian environment in at least uh, thirty percent of the samples we took, which were very small samples, and um, we um, also found it in two out of about the forty or fifty water samples fifty water samples so it 's about four uh, percent, which was you know really quite unusual we weren 't actually expecting to find it in the water sewage yes, but not in the water and this kind of is a reflection on again the poor um, sanitation, uh, but also the fact that clean water or potable water in some countries is very difficult to find. It also makes an intrinsic link between spread of antibiotic resistance and sanitation. And that's something that I think has been neglected in about the last 10, 20 years.